Hey film fans, my name is David, this is Film Collector Archive, and today we are talking Orbit DVD Hall Episode 3. Needless to say, I am very happy to be bringing you another episode of Orbit DVD Hall, or The Orbit DVD Hall, or whatever we're calling this. Um, always excited to bring you more content uh, with Orbit DVD. Uh, they are my favorite location to uh, buy items for the film collection. Um, I've talked these guys up in uh, previous episodes. I will, as always, add a link to the Orbit DVD website. Um, if you're interested in any of the titles that we're going over today, or you want to go browse their catalog, um, they get in a ton of great titles. They have used and new media, so definitely go over to their site and check out what they have to offer. We've got another big stack to get to here, so I'm going to go ahead and jump right into this, um, but we have a wide range of uh, titles, maybe not as wide a range of uh, labels as we've had in the past, but we have a few um, to go over here. So I'll start off here with uh, Kino Lorber. This is the only Kino title that we have in this haul. Um, but this is a uh, film uh, with Richard Wright. This is based on the novel uh, from Richard Wright, and it is a film by Pierre Chenal. And uh, this is Native Son. Um, now this uh, particular title is from the Library of Congress. Uh, this is from the Kino Classics line. So this is not their Kino Lorber Studio Classics that have the black spine. This is the Kino uh, Classics line. And so they have more of the variation on the spines on those titles. Um, but this is a very interesting um, film noir uh, title and uh, features a 32-page booklet detailing the film's production, his, uh, production history written by uh, Edgardo C. Krebs. And uh, this is from 1951 uh, out of Argentina with a runtime of 108 minutes. Um, so this is almost kind of a follow-up to... Um, we had some film noir titles from Flickr Alley, which we'll be going over a significant amount of Flickr Alley here next. Um, but this is kind of a, a nice companion title to uh, some of the film noir titles that we went over in the last Orbit Hall, uh, some international film noir titles, if you will. Um, so really excited to add this one to the collection. And yeah, the 32, I think it's cool that they included the 32 page booklet here with this release as well. Um, so Native Son. Have you seen it? If so, let me know your com uh, your thoughts in the comments down below, but excited to watch that one and add to my film noir library. Um, so next up here, yeah, we're gonna dive right in on, um, actually, right before we go to Flickr Alley, I'm going to do one, uh, the one Eureka title um, that I got in this haul. And, uh, this is a film by Lee Singh. Um, this is from 1972 out of Taiwan, a runtime of 99 minutes, and this is Execution in Autumn. And yeah, sorry, I try my best to uh, let you see the covers here. Um, Cause these are not obviously full unboxing videos. This is just a haul video, but yeah, beautiful cover there, um, Execution in Autumn. Uh, referred to as the godfather of Taiwanese cinema, the films of director Lee Singh, uh, who passed away in 2021 at the age of 91, combined Western realism with the Neo-Confucian ideals advocated by the nationalist government in Taiwan. Um, director of a number of masterpieces presented here is the film he considered his personal favorite of all his films, and certainly his most successful, Execution in Autumn. I, I love, love, love Asian cinema, and so um, had to add this one to the collection. There's still some other um, 
kung fu titles, some other Asian titles right now that I'm currently after to to bring in the collection. But this is one uh, that was on that list, and I am really excited to bring this in. And uh, yeah, again, 1972 runtime of 99 minutes. Um, this is a Region B release, so this is Region B locked, or at least the uh, the package here specifies such as such. So. Um, something to be aware of if you're after this title. Okay, now we are going to dive into Flickr Alley. Sorry, I'm trying to, uh, hopefully I'm sitting up straight here and not kind of sinking out of frame. Um, yeah, Flickr Alley. So first up here, we have a, uh, vol a volume one collection, 50 digitally restored classic films. This is the Mac Senate Collection. Um, volume one, 50 digitally restored classic films and has a, a decent amount of uh, bonus features here. Um, this is a three disc Blu-ray collection of 50 digitally restored classic films from 1901 to 1933. Uh, this has a runtime of 16 hours and 45 minutes. Uh, this is out of the US and is uh, all in, or no, there's black and white and color, as well as silent and sound films or talkies. Um, and it uh, looks like everything in here is at a 1.33 to one aspect ratio. So you will have black bars on uh, either side of the picture. Um, so that is the Max Senate collection. Uh, volume one, so I, I do hope that there is a follow-up with some uh, volumes in the future. Um, next up, I'm really, really interested, I mean, I'm interested in all these titles, but really interested in this title from Flickr Alley. I kind of happened across it doing a search on Amazon for, I just did a Flickr Alley search on Amazon because I wanted to kind of see uh, some other offerings that they had, and this one really caught my eye. This is The Extraordinary World of Charlie Bowers. Uh, 17 short films from 1917 to 1940. Now, you can tell here by, I mean, obviously I've covered Flickr Alley before, but even in the two titles that we've gone over here, one of the reasons that I love Flickr Alley is that they cover early, early cinema, and I am very interested in that. My interest in the silent uh, film era has grown immensely and uh, I'm so excited to do more and more research in that era. Um, in fact, one of the, um, the George Millier set that I pulled in that I, we went over last haul, that had uh, films as early as 1899. Um, so we're really, really getting back there. But yeah, 1917 to 1940, total runtime on this is 288 minutes. Um, now, the reason that I'm so interested in this specific title is because this is, I uh, goes over, um, or Charlie Bowers, I guess, was uh, an animator, and um, let's see, in fact, if we can get a little bit of a, read a little bit of the blurb here on the back. Uh, what, for some audiences, may be a delightful introduction and others a fresh Rediscovery, The Extraordinary World of Charlie Bowers offers a rare portal into the imagination of the, one of the great innovators and creators of early cinema, featuring new, take, uh, new 2K transfers and new discoveries uh, never uh, seen before. Um, Flickr Alley, in association with Lobster Films and Blackhawk Films, invite you to experience the genius of cartoonist, animator, there we go, so cartoonist, animator, director, and comedian, Charlie Bowers. And yeah, so there's uh, two discs here as well as bonus materials, um, which looks like there's a Looking for Charlie Bowers, a short documentary, image gallery, and then there's a souvenir booklet featuring an essay written by film historian and author, Sean uh, Axemaker. That, that's a cool last name. Um, but yeah, I, I know you're not going to be able to probably see the listings on the back there, but um, yeah, it lists out the uh, the films included um, over the two-disc set, and again, that comes in at a runtime of 288 minutes. 
Um, if you didn't know, I'm a huge animation fan, and uh, so to see some very, very early animation history contained here, I mean, that that it really, really does it for me. So, uh, The Extraordinary World of Charlie Bowers, yeah, 17 short films. Next up, uh, names that we definitely know, um, those of us that are into uh, cinema and, and film history. Uh, this is Laurel or Hardy, uh, early solo films of Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy. So that is uh, really intriguing uh, to me to take a look at the early films of uh, Laurel and Hardy, but not as a duo, more work that they did individually um, leading up to uh, work that they did together. Um, so here, again, going way back, uh, we have films from 1914 uh, to 1926 uh, with a runtime of 590 minutes. So cool cover there. Sorry, I'll try and uh, show these covers better, but uh, yeah, restorations from the collections of the Library of Congress and Lobster Films presented by Flickr Alley. Um, and this also, I love the souvenir booklets that they include in these sets. Um, and they come in the Scanovo cases, and so they're packaged like um, Indicator and Criterion, and um, I love that style, the clear Scanovo cases. So uh, winning packaging here, um, amazing content on these sets, and yeah, a bunch of films too. And, and I like that they have them broken up on the back here by the Stan Laurel films and the Oliver Hardy films. So lots to get into here. Um, so we've got four more Flickr Alley titles. The last one that we'll go over with Flickr Alley is actually a, another box set. Um, but next up, this is an interesting one. I don't know quite what I'm getting into. Um, in fact, this and the next two as well, they're going to be uh, really interesting because I don't know quite what I'm up for with these, but they absolutely caught my eye. Um, this is called We're in the Movies. Um, Palace of Silence and Itinerant uh, Filmmaking. Um, this unique set features two documentaries never before seen on home video, When You Wore a Tulip and I Wore a Big Red Rose and Palace of Silence, as well as six bonus films from early itinerant uh, and local filmmakers. Um, so When You Wore a Tulip and I Wore a Big Red Rose is from 1983. And uh, Palace of Silence, the silent movie theater in Los Angeles, is from is a documentary from 2010. Uh, total runtime here between the two documentaries is 217 minutes, and then there is a great deal of uh, bonus materials here, including some short films, and I believe yeah, there's a souvenir booklet or a booklet of some sorts. I don't know if they always call them souvenir booklets or if they're um, yeah, I'm not sure. They don't really point that out here on the back, but there is a booklet included in this one as well. Um, so yeah, we're in the movies, Palace of Silence and itinerant uh, filmmaking. And I love a good documentary. Okay, so next up, I'm actually gonna hold these up at the same time here because they are, it's kind of a two part thing here. So we have uh, 3D rarities and 3D Rarities Volume 2. Uh, let's go with the first one here. So this is um, 3D Rarities, a collection of 22 ultra rare and stunningly restored, uh, restored 3D films. I do not have a 3D setup, so I will not be watching these in 3D, but these seemed um, like really interesting historical documents of 3D cinema and in my opinion, I mean, for instance, I love Friday the 13th Part 3, 3D. I love Jaws 3 in 3D, but I don't watch them in 3D, but I love the cheesy 3D kind of gimmick to them. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see in here, you know, of course, watching it for me in 2D, um, 
but I'm really interested in the content that they've collected because from what I understand, and I think it's part of the blurb uh, back here, but apparently the content um, on these sets was collected over uh, many, many, many years and put together for these sets. So that just really intrigues me and, and uh, I love learning of the history of cinema, of course. And uh, yeah, this seems really interesting. So um, total runtime on this set is 147 minutes. And then there's instructions on here uh, to watch 3D versions of these films. You need 3D TV, obviously, and then it just kind of goes over the requirements there. Um, and then this uh, does include uh, 3D footage directed by Francis Ford Coppola for The Bellboy and The Playgirls from 1962. Uh, we've got some commentary tracks by Ta uh, Thad uh, Komarowski and Jack uh, Theakston. 3D photo, photo galleries from The Hunchback of Notre Dame, New York's uh, World's Fair, Sam Sawyer, Viewmaster Reels from 1950, and 3D comic books from 1953. And then you get a 24-page booklet here. Um, and the films that I just listed, those are just bonus features. That has nothing to do with the kind of main features here. Um, so that is uh, Volume 1. Uh, volume 2... So 3D Rarities, uh, Volume 2. Um, this is from, I don't know if I said the years on this one. It actually does not give years on this one. On Volume 2, it does. Uh, this has content from 1941 to 1983. Uh, Runtime of 153 minutes. Um, you get a souvenir booklet in this one as well. And yeah, just jam-packed I mean well 153 minutes of the main content here so nice to have both volumes of the 3d rarities and the last um, Flickr Alley title here this is a box set my second box set that I've bought uh, that, I, that I've purchased from Flickr Alley um, and both of them have to do with really the same uh, central figure here and that is none other than Charlie Chaplin and this is Chaplin's mutual comedies from 1916 to 1917 uh, the other box set which is behind me on my my uh, Flickr Alley shelf um, I've gotten enough titles now that I've just started its own shelf that was the uh, Chaplin and I'm probably butchering this SNA or I think that's how you say it, SNA comedies from 1915. So these are from uh, 1916 and 1917, and they're, again, Chaplin's mutual comedies. Um, and this is a two Blu-ray, or, you know, there's two cases in here, as well as a booklet included in there as well. Um, I'll just go over this really quick. Uh, this does include a 28-page booklet, and then... Uh, the films here are The Floor Walker, The Fireman, The Vagabond, 1AM, The Count, The Pawn Shop, Behind the Screen, The Rink, Easy Street, The Cure, The Immigrant, and The Adventurer. Um, so that's Chaplin's Mutual Comedies. And then just to give you an idea on the back there, and then, um, you know, the box set, and then the two cases, which again, they're two clear Scanovo cases on the inside there. And then the booklet is packaged in the uh, box there alongside the two. So that does it for Flickr Alley. Uh, next up, uh, we so we have three box sets left basically to go uh, for this haul. Um, this is from BFI, and I've I've got my eyes on BFI now. So, uh, in fact, the only other one that I currently have is the BFI 4K release of The Proposition, which I still need to watch in a very nice um, hardbound box. And uh, this is the same thing. This is a 4K release of a, a film directed by Mike Hodges. This is Michael Caine in Get Carter, um, a film that I have had interest in for a significant period of time really happy to bring this in the collection and watch it via uh, this uh, 4k restoration presented here in this BFI limited edition set um, 
Yeah, so it says uh, 4K UHD Blu-ray presentation. It doesn't state if it's a uh, what you know what the source of the scan is, um, but it does have a newly recorded introduction by Michael Caine from 2022 um, that runs three minutes. So that'll be uh, nice to have that introduction on here. And uh, this is one of these nice hardbound boxes. Um, I will be doing a separate unboxing. Uh, video for this title so stay tuned on the channel for that um, but yeah there's a lot of extra features because we're doing a separate video on this one I'll kind of hold those details for that video but a uh, really nice looking set here uh, 4k release from BFI of a uh, British classic here with Michael Caine and uh, Get Carter um, next up I am so excited for this release like top five releases of this year type of excited um, now I have to explain um, I saw this film originally in theaters I have not seen the film since theaters but before purchasing this set I watched the film again to kind of get you know a good gauge as far as where I was um, in terms of obviously wanting to bring it in the collection, kind of my thoughts, because it's not uh, traditionally a type of genre. Now, it's it's a horror film, but it's uh, kind of a vein of horror that I usually don't go too heavy on. Um, but I have to say, I watched the film again before purchasing this set, and I was like low level, like blown away by this how, how good this film was um, and this is from Robert Eggers and uh, this is the A24 film uh, The Witch um, a New England folktale and this is the absolutely stunning 4k release from Second Sight um, all I have to say is I am so so excited to have this in the collection and I will be going for the A24 screenplay book uh, that's on the A24 shop. Um, their screenplay books look really stunning and I would like to start diving in and adding some of those to my, uh, to my library. So I will, um, I will be almost immediately picking up the, uh, the Witch screenplay book. So I'm sure I'll have some kind of coverage on the channel for that once I do pick that up. But for now, um, I have the film, and wow, it, it it is a really astonishing film. If you have not seen it, um, if you're squeamish, you know, you're not traditionally maybe into horror films, I would say probably stay away. But uh, if you're into horror and you have not seen this, um, man, it's it's really, really good. Really good. Um, it really stuck with me. I, again, I had seen it in theaters, and uh, I I will say I I can't watch the film and not have some reservations about the story. Um, but even with my reservations, um, you know my my issues with the story. It, it still absolutely blew me away. So I'm really happy to have this one in the collection. Yes, there will be a separate unboxing video for this one. This is way too gorgeous of a set to not have a separate unboxing video for. So please stay tuned on the channel for that coverage. Um, but at least for now, you can get a look at uh, the cover. We'll, we'll go into greater detail and you'll be able to see the artwork and be able to enjoy that a lot more on that video. But uh, the Witch from Second Sight on 4K. Uh, just so happy to have it here. Okay, and the last item here from this haul. This is just a really fun, uh, just a really fun purchase. Uh, this is a television show um, of which I have not seen uh, every episode of. So this is one that I'm going to be. Uh, or that I am really excited to visit and you know of course see in this blu-ray presentation and watch from end to end 
when will I be able to complete that and watch every episode? I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, it's not going to happen immediately, but I'm just really excited to have this one. And uh, this is none other than the A-Team, the complete series. And uh, thank you, Orbit, for getting me a pristine, um, yeah, really, really clean uh, box set here. Usually these things get pretty banged up if you order them, especially, you know, from Amazon or wherever. Um, but yeah, this is, and I really like how they have this packaged uh, in individual seasons in the Blu-ray cases here. Um, season one through five, and they have the different colors there and so just really well packaged, you know, the spine there on the box is really fun. And uh, you do get uh, a couple of bonus features here. Rumors of Soldiers of Fortune, interview with Stephen J. Uh, Cannell, and the great 80s TV flashback. I'm tempted to do a separate unboxing for this. I, I'm not 100% sure if that'll happen or not, but... Um, if I do, you know, that'll, that'll come sooner rather than later here on the channel. So either way, though, very, very excited to have the A-Team and to watch. I, I've seen enough of the show to know that I it, it's really fun and, and definitely something that I want in the collection. Um, but yeah, I'll be excited to visit this one and, and watch kind of from beginning to end, um, however long that takes, uh, but be able to watch the show in its entirety here. And it's nice to have in this nice compact uh, box set. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So that is the A team. All right. So that does it. Um, no, that uh, does not do it. Hang on one second, and I will be right back with my last item. All right, and I'm back. Uh, it just dawned on me that I forgot one item from this haul. I had my stack of movies and I forgot that I got uh, one book in this haul. I, I like to get, um, if there's any uh, film reference books, uh, Orbit has a good selection of film reference books. And so usually if there's one that I'm in need of that they have in stock, usually I'll do uh, you know one or two books and then I'll get my stack of films. But I uh, could not say no to this. Uh, this is from Turner Classic Movies. My Turner Classic Movies book collection is really healthy these days, and I am really excited to uh, include this one. Uh, this has a foreword by the great Eddie Muller, the czar of noir himself. Uh, yeah, from Turner Classic. This is written by Mark A. Vieira, and uh, this is Into the Dark. Uh, the Hidden World of Film Noir, 1941 through 1950. Now, there's another Turner Classic Movies book, which I do have back on the shelf behind me. Um, I don't know, you can play Where's Waldo and see if you can maybe spot it. But uh, there's a book by Eddie Muller called Dark City, and it's uh, under the Turner Classic Movies publication series, if you will. And that, of course, deals with film noir as well. Um, this has a really striking uh, spine there, nice and bold. And uh, there is the back of the book. And nice and thick, nice nice tome here. Um, but yeah, any research that I can do on the history of film noir, I'm in. And especially when it's coming from Turner Classic Movies. and you know, a forward by Eddie Muller, the DNA. I mean, it, it's it's all here. So uh, really excited to have this and add this to the Turner Classic Movies book collection uh, of which I, I think there's only a few of the Turner Classic Movies books that I don't have. And so, um, yeah, always excited to add a new uh, TCM book, but uh, Into the Dark here by Mark A. Vieira. Okay, so that does uh, do it for this haul. Um, very excited what we have here. We'll just do a quick recap here, um, and I'll try and do a better job, you know, of uh, allowing you to see the covers of everything here. So we have the A-Team, the complete series. We have the Witch from uh, Second Sight Films in beautiful 4K and in a stunning box set. 
We have Michael Kane in Get Carter from BFI, also in 4K. We have uh, Chaplin's uh, Mutual Comedies from Flickr Alley, nice box set. 3D Rarities Volume 2 from Flickr Alley, 3D Rarities Volume 1. We're in the movies, the uh, two documentary uh, Blu-ray here with, um, sorry, uh, When You Wore a Tulip and I Wore a Big Red Rose and Palace of Silence, the silent movie theater in Los Angeles. We have Laurel or Hardy, early solo films of Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy. Uh, we have The Extraordinary World of Charlie Bowers, deluxe uh, two-disc Blu-ray edition here. We have The Max Senate Collection, Volume 1, 50 digitally restored classic films. Uh, we have Execution in Autumn from Eureka. And finally, we have uh, Native Son from the Kino Lorber or the uh, Kino Classics line. So very, very excited about the titles that I brought into the collection here. Let me know, are there any titles here that you're interested in that you've brought into your collection? Let me know, I love continuing the conversation in the comments. And until next time, I hope you're able to watch a lot of great films.